Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would like to give a quick thanks to our Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Fallen Angel, Buzz Killington. Thank you again. Now on to the story. Timorous Beastie, written by You're Sure I'm Not a Robot. The interrogator fumed loudly. This creature is indifferent to our treatment. It hasn't been fed in nearly two cycles. None of our threats has made an impression on the thing. Indeed, it laughed at me. The Chief Inquisitor leaned back. Well then, uh, we shall throw it to the monsters. At least we'll learn what its species spears before we attack. The interrogator fell silent for a moment. Sire, we are not at war with these creatures yet. It is forbidden. It is evil. He fell silent again, aware that he might face the same fate as the creature for opposing each chief. Instead, his superior laughed again. Good man, empathy is the best weapon. However, the specimen will serve its purpose. I promise I'll be gentler with the next. Once we know what these creatures fear, it'll be a simpler task to break them. Professor Hayes was getting a little tired of this. She'd been carefully unveiling a very promising coniform tablet unearthed from the rubble of a British museum. And then the whole tired story of a bright light and a white room happened. She had done her thesis on alien abduction through the ages, and if things played out as usual, she would be home soon with nothing worse than a headache. She couldn't figure out if they were trying to threaten her or not. The food certainly was terrible. She pulled the straps on the table. They seemed to be some kind of vulgar, but she couldn't get the leverage to open them. In her head, she began making notes, just in case she wanted to write this up. The aliens are soft-bodied, no masks, so I assume the same atmosphere as Earth. Obviously, military. Probably some kind of scout. They aren't on our books. Well, not unless you change color. More orange, they gray. Can't call them oranges. I never get punished. Okay. Their deck seems pretty average, from what I can see. They seem upset in my pain tolerance, but, um... She was interrupted by the door sliding open, and a larger alien stood in front of her. It began monologuing. Creature, we will learn what you truly feel. Within our grasp are the horrors of a hundred species. And we will add yours. That you learn your place at our feet. Hayes leaned up as far as she could with a strap across her neck. I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat your evil plan? Uh, I was miles away. The alien snapped at the interrogator. Take it and put it in the chamber. We shall see what it is left when it faces its fears. To her disappointment, they didn't take her off the table, merely pushing her and it out of the room. So much for heroics. They placed her in a dim chamber, not much wine at the table, and placed a mask over her face. Her first thought was, Crap! Here comes the probes! But instead, the chamber went completely dark and she was left in silence. It reminded her of one of those isolation chambers from the spa day that she had been forced into at a wedding. She hoped these creatures couldn't truly read fears because she had sworn to never be a bridesmaid again. There was a flash, and she found herself chained to a rock in front of a stormy sea, salt water staining her thin white dress. She looked around. Oh, cool. I'm an Andromeda. Nice. She found the chains were probably artistic, so she sat down and waited for Cetus to arrive. Or Perseus, whoever got you first. She was surprised when it turned out to be some weird alien tentacle thing. Definitely not a human fear. This must be what the oranges were talking about. Wait, this was about her fears. She stood up and raised up her arms. I summon Cthulhu! From behind the alien beast rose a true terror, a vast darkness summoned from the deep. 
It fell upon the intruder that stood between it and the sacrifice and tore it asunder. Hayes watched as the alien fell and called out to the old one, Nice! Now go home. Cthulhu dived beneath the waves, carrying the corpse of the enemy tightly within its tentacles. The chain fell away as she found herself on a stone floor, still the same stupid dress though. She called out to her would-be tormentors, I uh, don't want to play space Pokemon, just send me home. Then something moved overhead in the shadows. She sat up, it skittered across the room. Oh, a spider thing. She rather likes spiders. After a moment she called, Shilob, some bitch is trying to take your cave. Again the darkness arose. Hayes hesitated and called out, a light in dark places. A small vial fell into her hand, casting the light against the room. Shalob ignored her, attacking the alien whatever the fuck, and rendering it an ancient malice and unending hunger. Again, she was thrown into chains, this time surrounded by goblins. They looked small and as dark as coal. They seemed to have a lot of knives. Fine, she knew she could deal with this. I summon Balor of the Eye to defend his people. Is she technically qualified? More Scots than Irish, but whatever. The giant stepped out of the dark and opened its fearsome eye, burning everything. She reached out and crushed a dozen of the little stabby things. It turned to her and she bowed. Thank you, kind sir. You may go. The giant grunted and stepped back into the dark. Again, the scene shifted and she found herself chained in a volcano by demons approaching. She sighed, Balrog! The vast evil rose up from the lava and began ripping them apart. It looked at her with the cruel, burning eyes. Don't, or I'll call Gandalf. It hissed and disappeared into the lava. She found herself in a room of shifting mirrors. A deep sense of menace in an endless rumor. Wreck that. Also, the stress was knackered. She kept her eyes closed and called out, Medusa, one of your sisters is in need. I summon you. She didn't watch as whatever fell to the Medusa's curse and crashed through the glass. She heard only the mirrors shatter and the hiss of the snakes. She kept her head down. Thank you, my lady. Unexpectedly, the creature answered. Farewell, sister. We await your call. The chief inquisitor watched in disbelief as the creature summoned its demons to serve it. Whatever dark fears they raised against her, she would raise greater ones and give it thanks after it had dispatched her enemy. What were these creatures? The dreaded serpents of Auric were dispatched by an angry priest. The wind demons of Nerat were eaten by something called a Pennywise. His personal favorite, the leeches of Astrian, were dispatched by some oddly sparkling vampires. She wasn't even standing up anymore, just summoning evils beyond belief. I call the black dog of Bowley. Several painful minutes later. Good boy, off you go. I summon the skinwalker, eat that uh, thing, and leave. Thanks. Enough, get it out of there. I need information. How is she doing this? Finally, she was dragged out of the chamber, and the mask ripped off roughly. Creature, you will tell us what you have done. Our system is infested with your monsters. She smiled up. Break you. Take the chains off, and I might explain. The chief inquisitor nodded, and the interrogator let her loose. She sat up and rubbed her wrists. About time. So that's your big party trick. She looked at the big nasty. Now was nothing. We make millions of monsters. I can fill your ships with ghosts, werewolves, zombies, and that's even before I start doing a howl, she grinned. Wait until you meet the demons. She stood and brushed down her work clothes. At least she wasn't in that stupid dress anymore. That's what we do with our fears. We tame them so that they serve us. She leaned in and whispered, You know who you should be afraid of? The chief inquisitor leaned forward just in time to get her trowel straight in the face. Me! Now drop me home before I lose my temper! She wiped the weird blood from her trowel and put it back in her pocket. Now! 
The interrogator walked her carefully to the transporters. He felt that he should add something. I'm sorry for your experience. It must have been terrible to be a ooman. We'll avoid conflict. So much beer. Hayes slowed up his space. Listen, firstly, it's human. And second, you have a lot more to fear than I do. I was just visiting our old homeworld. It's my job to investigate the past. You, on the other hand, just abducted someone in plain sight of the human race. All of it. She looked at the timorous beastie. The thing I fear is us. What we can do. What we have done uh, when they find you. And they will. Surrender or run like those monsters are behind you. Now send me home. She was right about their neck. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.